today we are reading again from my treasury of fairy tales but today we are reading little red riding hood by the brothers Grimm. look there's little red riding hood and there's the wolf we're going to get to meet them a little bit later there once was a little girl who lived with her mother at the edge of the forest she was kind and sweet and everyone loved her on the other side of the forest lived the little girl's granny. Granny looked forward to her granddaughter coming to visit and always gave her a present. The very best present was a riding cape with a hood made of red velvet. The little girl liked it so much that she wore it all of the time. So everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood. And there's the house, that's where she lives. And there's Little Red Riding Hood with her mum and her granny, with her lovely red cape that her granny had given her. Grandmas are always good for presents, aren't they? <laughs> One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother put some cake and fruit in a basket. These are for granny, mother told Little Red Riding Hood. She isn't feeling well, and these goodies will cheer her up and help her to get better. I'd like to help Granny get better, said Little Red Riding Hood. Can I take the goodies to her? Of course, said Mother, but you must promise to be very careful on your way through the forest. Stay on the path and don't speak to any strangers. I promise, Mother, said Little Red Riding Hood, and off she went. But there's all the goodies that are being packed into the basket. And there's Little Red Riding Hood's mum giving her the basket and telling her to be very careful and not to talk to any strangers. As Little Red Riding Hood skipped along the path through the forest, she didn't know that a sly, greedy old wolf was watching her from behind a tree. When she was just a little way down the path, the wolf sprang out in front of her. Good morning, my dear, said the wolf with a big toothy grin. Little Red Riding Hood remembered what her mother had told her and she didn't speak to the wolf. She kept walking straight down the path, but that sly old wolf just followed her. Look, there's the wolf watching from behind the trees. Look at his big teeth. And look at Little Red Riding Hood. She's been very good. The wolf is trying to tempt her and even the birds and the bunnies are saying be careful of the wolf. She's being very good. She's not talking to the wolf because you mustn't talk to strangers. And Little Red Riding Hood knows this. I can see what kind of girl you are, said the wolf. Won't you wish me a good morning? Now, Little Red Riding Hood was kind and sweet. So she stopped for just the tiniest moment and said, Good morning, sir. The sly old wolf smiled a very wide smile, thinking, What a sweet, tasty little red riding hood snack that little girl would make. Where are you going on this fine morning? he asked. Not wanting to be rude, little red riding hood answered, To my granny's house on the other side of the forest, sir. She isn't feeling well and I'm taking some goodies to cheer her up. Oh dear, she broke the code. She talked to a stranger. There's Little Red Riding Hood walking along and there's the naughty wolf is tempting her and getting her to speak to him. Mustn't talk to strangers. Remember, mustn't talk to strangers. Hmm, the wolf thought to himself. This little girl might make a sweet snack, but her granny would make her tasty meal. He began to work out a crafty plan. Wouldn't your granny like some pretty flowers? The wolf asked Little Red Riding Hood. There are so many growing near the path. Yes, granny loves flowers, said Little Red Riding Hood. A pretty posy would help to cheer her up. Little Red Riding Hood began to gather the flowers growing near the path, but soon she forgot her mother's warning not to stray from the path. She strayed further and further into the forest, finding all of the pretty flowers for Granny. 
oh dear all of the bunnies know that she's gone off the path she's not listened to her mummy and when you don't listen to mummy you always end up in trouble even though she's doing a nice thing for her granny it means that she's actually being very naughty meanwhile the wolf hurried to the other side of the forest and went straight to granny's house he tap tapped lightly on the door who's there called granny it's little red riding hood called the wolf in his softest sweetest voice i've brought you a basket of goodies just lift the hatch open the door and come in said granny so the wolf lifted the hatch, opened the door and went right in. Oh dear, the wolf has managed to get into Granny's house. And Granny's sitting in bed, knitting and trying to get better again. She's not feeling very well and you can see the shadow of the wolf from the door is over the bed. Oh no. Before poor Granny even knew that it was the wolf, he had gobbled her up in one big gulp. Then he put on her nightcap and crept into her bed with the covers tucked under his chin. I'll have that little girl for dessert, he said to himself with a big toothy grin. Oh dear, that naughty wolf. Look, he's pretending to be her granny. And now he's got into Granny's bed and he's going to really pretend to be her Granny. Oh no. A little while later, Little Red Riding Hood arrived at the cottage with a pretty posy of flowers. She tap tapped lightly on the door. Who's there? called the wolf in his gentlest Granny voice. It's Little Red Riding Hood, she replied. I've bought you a basket of goodies. Just lift up the hatch, open the door and come in, said the wolf. So Little Red Riding Hood lifted the hatch, opened the door and went right in. Little Red Riding Hood looked over at the bed. Poor Granny, she must be very ill, she thought. She looks so strange. There she is with all of her goodies. And she's been a nice girl. She's gone and got some flowers for her Granny. But she didn't listen to her mummy and because she didn't listen she's getting into a lot of trouble now because look that naughty wolf has been able to trick her because she didn't listen to her mum she stepped closer to the bed oh granny she gasped what big eyes you have all the better to see you with my dear said the wolf Little Red Riding Hood stepped even closer. Oh, Granny, she said, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf. Little Red Riding Hood stepped right up to the bed. Oh, Granny, what big hands you have. All the better to hold you with, said the wolf. Oh, Granny, she said, what big teeth you have. All the better to eat you with, growled the wolf, jumping out of bed. And he gobbled up Little Red Riding Hood in one big gulp. Oh no. Gobbled all in one go. Poor Little Red Riding Hood with her cape and everything. With his belly so full, it was almost ready to burst. The wolf lay back down on the bed and fell fast asleep. You see the wolf is fast asleep in Granny's bed. You can see he's got such a big tummy because now not only is he eating her Granny, he's eating Red Riding Hood as well. At that moment, a hunter was passing Granny's cottage and he heard a strange sound coming through the open window. The poor old woman is snoring very loudly, the hunter said to himself. I'd better go in and see if she's all right. So in went the hunter. Of course, he saw that it wasn't Granny who was snoring at all. It was the wolf. I've been hunting you for a long time, he cried. Now at last I have found you. He raised his gun to shoot the wolf, but then looked at the wolf's belly. <gasps> Look at the hunter, he's seen the wolf, he's going to go in. You sly old wolf, cried the hunter. From the size of your belly, I'd say you've swallowed poor old granny. 
He took out his hunting knife and very carefully slit open the wolf's belly. Zip, zip. Out jumped Granny and Little Red Riding Hood too. Thank you for saving us, said Granny. It was so dark and horrible in there, said Little Red Riding Hood. While the wolf was still asleep, Little Red Riding Hood went outside and got some stones. She brought them in and filled the wolf's belly with them. Then the hunter stitched up the wolf's belly as good as new. Look at the nice, kind hunter. He saved Red Riding Hood and her granny. They look a bit wet, though. I think they'll listen to Mummy next time, yeah? When the wolf woke up a little while later, he had such belly ache that he ran out of the cottage moaning and groaning. He went off to hide in a cave and he was never ever seen again. As soon as the wolf was gone, Little Red Riding Hood and Granny sat together to enjoy the basket of goodies. Before long, Granny was feeling much, much better. Little Red Riding Hood said, As long as I live, I will never leave the path and run off into the woods by myself if Mother tells me not to. And she never did. Look, there's the naughty wolf. He's gone off to sulk with his belly full of rocks. And there's little Red Riding Hood and her granny. Now, I don't think she'll be ignoring what her mummy says ever again, do you? <laughs> the end. In the next story, we're going to read The Princess and the Pea. So look out for it coming very soon. Mwah.